Prophecy 76 Beloved Bride of Yahushua, arise and prepare yourself, for your bridegroom doeth come. Written and spoken under the anointing of the Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, through Apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomiah. From Prophecy 105, Yahweh said to put this up on all prophecies from now on. I warned you a long time ago, Elizabeth, not to name this ministry after a man or a woman, even before there was a ministry. I put it in your spirit, for none of this has been done by your hand. None of this has come forth from your mouth. It is from the mouth of Yahweh that has given birth. It is from the mouth of Yahushua, your Mashiach, that has given birth. It is from the mouth of the Ruach HaKodesh, your Imayah, that has given birth. If it had only been by your hand, it would have failed long ago. It is by the Shekinah's glory, wind that blows across this earth, the holy wind of revival. It is not by your breath, or it would have failed. Yahushua told me to tell the entire bride, Happy Rosh Hashanah. Beloved bride of Yahushua, arise and prepare yourself for your groom doeth come. Prophecy begins. O oh, my beloved ring maiden, you cry out to me and say, who am I to release such a message? For I don't feel worthy to have this honor. Who will believe this message is heaven sent? But I say unto you, my beloved, It is not whether you consider yourself worthy of speaking forth this message to the entire bride. The only thing that matters is I have deemed you worthy, and your opinion of yourself or what others say is of no importance. Only that you obey and write and speak forth what I tell you to say. Do not edit me in any way. And then many years that you have served me, you have felt the sting of the religious demons slander you with words and actions. But this new word will expose the demon of Jezebel in those that consider themselves holy and yet have no holiness in them. They will attack you and yet I, Yahushua, will protect you for you are mine. Just as Elijah of old was protected from Jezebel and Ahab, so shall you also be. So shall all the bride of Yahushua HaMashiach be protected. Now is the time for the shield maidens to come forth and cover you in their prayers, love, and support. For they also will be attacked at the same time as they step out in faith and contact you. I give them now the mandate. Those who recognize that they are the bride of Yahushua, come forth and gather together with this ring maiden. I am releasing this word from. Shield her with your intercessory prayers. Encouraging words and support and come together so she can encourage and, and nurture and support you also against the attacks of the enemy, of your mind, body, spirit, and soul. Here is a secret. Just as I have a bride, so too does Satan. And when the holy golden eagles gather, so too shall the vultures gather. But bride of Yahushua, you need one another, for your enemies are great in number. Many years ago, I gave this handmaiden a message in two dreams back to back. Assemble the troops on the wall. This is now that appointed time. Don't miss your day of visitation with one another. Now, Elizabeth, be bold as Elijah of old and speak forth the words I have commanded you, you to write and speak. And fret not yourself with those like spirits, like unto a Jezebel and Ahab. 
But know that those who attack you for obeying me shall suffer the same fate as a Jezebel and Ahab and the prophets of Baal. For those that attack you are attacking the one that anoints you to speak forth. Beware you with the spirit of the Pharisees before you attack my beloved one. You better, you had better examine your own hearts. Whoever doesn't agree with this prophetic word, take it to the judge of all creation for my beloved has only obeyed. These are not her words, but mine and those with spiritual ears to hear and listen. I ask you to encourage her and let her know. Arise, bride of Yahushua, as the five wise virgins in the parable I gave in Matthew, and prepare yourself for your soon coming bridegroom and Messiah is coming all so quickly. Pray that you will be counted worthy to be called the bride of Yahushua HaMashiach. Take this not for granted. Do not become puffed up with pride, for some will find out they are the guest and not the bride for this reason. To much is given, much more is expected. I, Yahushua, am the Good Shepherd, and my bride will not go to another master, as it is written. I will tell, I will tell my secrets to the prophets, and so I shall share secrets with my beloved bride and the honored guests that will be invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and only those who will tend their names are found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Inscribed before the foundation of this world. Study and show thyself approved as you meditate on why Enoch, Elijah, Elisha are of great importance. I, Yahushua, teach you now this is relevant to the bride of Yahushua. I am speaking forth this revelation. Behold, it is a new thing. The book of Enoch was not included with the books which are in the Bible. And yet I give you this mandate to find this book and study it and allow Yahweh to teach you truth seldom taught. For there are books that should have been included in the Holy Bible and were purposely left out because they would be too confrontational. Not all called the missing books of the Bible, but some. You must use discernment which books are of the Holy Spirit and truth and which is man-made. Ask yourself, why would the Creator put in 66 books in the Bible? For this is not a holy number. Six is the number of man. 666 is a number associated with the Antichrist. I speak to those who have spiritual ears to hear and listen. All others will remain deaf and mock, and mock what they do not understand. Verily I say unto you, I give you strong spiritual meat to eat. It is not meant for the spiritually weak. Elijah of old was but a shadow of the catching away of the bride of Yahushua HaMashiach. Elijah of old knew what mission he needed to finish and knew he would not die at that time. Elijah of old knew what day, hour, and minute Yahweh would send the chariot of fire to catch him away to heaven. And Elijah of old knew in advance who would be honored to behold this with their own eyes. And that man's name was Elisha. Elijah of old was taken to heaven by heavenly transportation, and so shall also the bride of Yahushua be caught away. When I, Yahushua, personally come for you, my beloved bride. 
Reread all the prophecies and you will see for many years I have called Elizabeth my Elijah of New. Yes, her legal maiden name is Elijah, but that is not the reason I have done this. She only recently learned the reason and it is more than sending her to the widows of Zarephath to test them. And they know it not, for their famine has not yet come. It is not just this reason, as stated in many of the prophecies I have spoken through her. I audibly spoke to her on Passover, April 5th, one day after her birthday, and told her, awakening her with the words she did not understand, and only through this message will understand more fully. You are my ring maiden. Verily I say unto her, and you with spiritual ears to hear and listen. I, Yahushua, call her my Elijah of new and reveal these secret revelations given to her straight from heaven. To be a blessing unto her as well as the true bride of Yahushua, Hamashiach. Just as Elijah of old knew when to expect Yahweh's horse-drawn chariot of fire to catch him away to heaven, and he knew the exact time and day and was prepared and warned Elisha in advance to watch him. Elijah of old is a shadow of what will happen with the bride. So why would I do any less for the bride of Yahushua? I will first send Archangel Michael to come and clear the path for the angel Gabriel to come to tell her. I have told her and her husband to wait for the birth of the announcement of the date Yahushua will come for his bride. Then one of her mandates will be as my ring maiden to ring this news around the world. To all the elite called the beloved bride of Yahushua. Beloved, ask yourself this question and again read Matthew 25, 6-7 and hear it now with holy ears. For it says, And at midnight a cry was heard, See the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the maidens raised up to trim their lamps. Verily I say unto you, Someone was chosen to be that messenger, to ring forth that cry that the entire bride of Yahushua will hear. And I have chosen this ring maiden to have this honor. What Yahweh did for my mother, Miriam, when I, Yahushua, came to this earth, I will do for my bride and send angels to Elizabeth to proclaim, The bridegroom doeth come. Make yourself ready and wait for me on this date, for I come to elope with my bride. Again, I say unto you, Elijah of old was a shadow of my bride being caught away. And my bride will be endued with a new outpouring of an anointing while on this earth. As a standard against the evil that will come against you like none other given before. All of my bride will know this message is true. For some have known this would happen. And have been waiting for this announcement to come to the four corners of the earth where I have hid my bride. This date will be spoken in secret and only to my true bride will she speak this to. You will never see this posted anywhere unless it is done without my permission. 
and woe be unto the Judas who would do such a thing trying to endanger my bride. You would, you who would attempt to do this will suffer the same fate as a Judas. Do not think Elizabeth asked for this. For truly I say unto you, I sent many prophets to her after prophecies 74 and 75 to tell her this would happen. And she said she was not worthy of this honor, her husband, and she replied. This ministry never wanted to be a rapture date to set her, and verily I say unto you both, You are not the date setter. No one will have to take the word of the calculations given to a mere man or woman. Angels will be sent from my throne to announce the date. So my bride will be as the five wise virgins and be prepared for her Messiah groom to come. To those who say, but it is written, no man was to know the date, the day or hour, this is true. When the scripture was written over 2,000 years ago, what value would it have been? Why would Abba Yahweh release thousands of years in advance the date when I, Yahushua, would come for my bride? As spoken of in Matthew 25, 1 through 13. What purpose would it have served to frustrate those who would have to wait? Remember, beloved, even the five foolish virgins knew the bridegroom was coming, but were caught unprepared. The parable that is spoken shows the five foolish virgins that did not have the anointing. and watched and waited with those with the anointing to know when the bride's groom would come. This parable also shows how I warned the five foolish virgins that thought the anointing of the bride could be bought with money. That it is not for sale and the bride knows this and mocks those who think Yahweh's gifts are for sale. When the five foolish virgins returned, the bridegroom and the bride had eloped. When they pounded on heaven's doors to be let in with the, the groom and bride, they were sent away weeping as the groom said, Depart from me, I never knew you. Not everyone is fit to be the bride. There are stiff qualifications, and the five foolish I recognize, recognize not as my bride. However, I leave them a warning, and that is, the five foolish virgins know not when I shall return for the guest. And they had better be ready, unless I, Yahushua, the Messiah groom, come again and find the guests sleeping or without oil in their lamps. All of the five foolish virgins will be tested in the fire of affliction, and some will come out as gold. Some will be martyred, some will remain, and some will be with me be caught away. Some of the five foolish virgins are guests and were not found fit to be the bride of Yahushua. I will not catch my true bride unaware, for she will hear the shofar horn blowing. And she will awaken to this cry, I shall ring forth from this ring maiden of mine. Remember, Satan seeks to go before me, so do not be fooled by the counterfeit date. And woe be unto anyone that calls themselves my ring maiden, besides the one I have anointed. That I use now to speak forth as my mouthpiece. There will be an anointing that will not be able to be counterfeited 
when the angels bring this message. So the true bright of Yahushua will give birth to an outpouring of an anointing from heaven like none other thus far. It will be the former and the latter rain anointing put together, combined with the double portion of Elijah anointing. Even your shadows will heal, heal the godly, for my healing balm of Gilead shall be in my entire bride. Sp I spoke audibly to Elizabeth the words years ago, gift of healing, sound of trumpet. She never knew the meaning of these words until now. Just as the shofar horn is blown at a Jewish wedding to announce the groom, so too will I, Yahushua, have the shofar horn blown to announce my coming. For my beloved bride, listen for that shofar horn. It is not afar off. I prophesied through this ring maiden that I would return again on a Sabbath, and I spoke to her. What if Rosh Hashanah is the day I would come? You know not yet which one. I also prophesied through her and spoke audibly to her. First one rapture, then another for those I love. The guest will be in the second catching away in the parable of the ten virgins. The second chance is given to the foolish so-called bride. That is when I tell them to watch therefore. For you know not what hour I will come again. Elijah of old had to have his body also changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. For mortal bodies must put on immortal bodies to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So too will my bride. Elijah of old dropped his mantle, his prayer shawl, his garment of clothing he wore. Just as you are the bride of Yahushua will not have need of your earthly clothes when I change your clothes. Into the most beautiful, sparkling, iridescent white robe which no earthly robe or garment can begin to compare. For you will sparkle like the most brilliant diamond this world has yet seen. I shall place a tiara upon the female's head as my beloved bride is adorned, and the men shall have a crown filled with precious stones none can compare on this earth. These are secrets I have I've shared with you, such as the book of Daniel I sealed until the end time generation. Ask of me and I shall tell you more, for I share these secrets with my bride, and I do not give all my revelations to one person or prophet. So share with this messenger who is speaking forth my message as a blessing unto you. Bless her back and let her know how much you discerned my anointing and the revelations I have given you. Some I have given dreams to, others visions, and others prophetic words. Now is the time for the bride to come together. I am issuing, issuing a clarion call. If you cannot come together in the flesh, you can, in other ways, email or write her. There are those reading this who discern someone they know is the bride of Yahushua, and yet this person may not see this. So share this with that person and have them write my handmaiden for she will have a gift to discern who is the bride. And who is the honored guest after the angel Gabriel appears to her? I have at times already shown her in advance of this. 
Elijah of old had an anointing that killed the prophets of Baal, as well as the enemies that pursued him, and so too will you. The, ten, the true bride of Yahushua will have that same anointing to call forth fire from heaven that will consume your enemies. You, the true bride of Yahushua, will also fight against and win the war against the Jezebel demons. The fate of those who try and destroy my true prophets and bride by trying to wear them out with the demonic spirits of Jezebel and Ahab will suffer the same fate as the prophets of Baal, as well as Elijah of old's enemies. You, the bride of Yahushua, will not, will do what Elijah of old did, and even more, before you leave this earth. And after you return from heaven, you are endured with new powers with your heavenly orders to be carried out as partly stated in Revelation 14. The rest is secret for now. We don't need to let the enemies know in advance. You, my beloved bride, will sing a song like none other, and I shall teach it to you myself. The bride of Yahushua will be the first fruits redeemed from this earth before the great day of Yahweh's wrath. Called the Great Tribulation. You who are the bride of Yahushua are eternally faithful and true to your Messiah and groom. You, the bride of Yahushua, will also have the gift to translate anywhere in the world and will have no need of earthly transportation. Need I remind you of how some of my disciples of old did not have a glorified body and yet they could do the same? The bride of Yahushua can have different appearances as I, Yahushua, did after my resurrection. My own apostles did not recognize their master. Verily I say unto you, just as Elisha bore witness with his own eyes and saw Elijah of old taken up in the horse strong chariot of fire, because Elisha refused to forsake him and was at his side when he was caught away. He received a double portion of anointing as Elijah of old had prophesied. Here is a mystery. Have you wondered why Elisha was separated and not taken by the chariot of fire with Elijah of old? It is because Elisha was a shadow of the 12 tribes of Israel in Revelation 7, and Elijah is a shadow of my bride in Revelation 14. So too will the sealed 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel be protected and sealed on this earth as it is written in Revelation 7 by an angel from heaven. Weapons of man shall not harm them, nor shall the plagues come near them, for they are not appointed to Yahweh's wrath. They will remain under Yahushua's grace, the bloodline that Yahushua drew at Calvary, and Satan can't cross that bloodline. These 144,000 will behold the bride's mantle as the anointing falls upon them in a way they had not known before. Verily I say unto you that Enoch was a shadow of the bride of Yahushua, for Enoch was translated to heaven, for he had this testimony, he did not die, but was translated to heaven, for he was found pleasing unto Yahweh. So also will you, the bride of Yahushua, be translated. For you will also have this testimony, that you pleased Yahweh, the Father of all creation, as well as I, Yahushua, his son. Because you obeyed and keep yourself holy without spot or wrinkle. This is why I told 
Elizabeth in a dream to memorize Hebrews 11.5. You, the bride of Yahushua, will bring Yahweh and Yahushua and the Ruach HaKodesh, also, also called by some the Holy Spirit. No shame. My bride, you do not just obey the Ten Commandments. For what challenge is there in that? I will release to you some of the major qualifications of how you will know if you are my bride or if you will be the honored guest at the marriage supper of the Lamb in this end time message for my bride and the honored guest. This message is not for the heathen, except to warn them. Beware of anyone who claims to be mine and yet attacks this prophetic word. For they are proving what evil spirit they are of and proving that the demonic spirit of Jezebel is attacking my rain maiden that I have anointed to hear my, my voice so the bride, as well as the guest, to the Mary Supper of the Lamb will be blessed and encouraged. Satan is the only one that would send his wolves dressed as sheep to attack my apostolic prophetic ring maiden named Elizabeth Sherry Elijah Nicomiah. I use her full name for my own reasons. That concern no one but the enemies that seek her destruction. They use her name as they cast curses. Verily I say unto you, anyone who says they worship and put Yahweh and Yahushua first in their lives and love, and yet struggle to obey the Torah, which includes the Ten Commandments, have a serious spiritual problem and had better realize that this is your soul at stake. Before you accepted me as your Messiah and asked me to come into your heart and take over your life, you had an excuse, but now you have none. Repent now before it is too late. Temptation is not sin, but beware. The sin enters first through the mind and then through the actions of your body. My bride, you are holy and living holy as an example of your Messiah. You speak holy and your mind is constantly on the love of your life, and that is Abba Yahweh and I Yahushua. My bride, you do not intentionally sin, for you do not want to grieve me, nor give Satan a reason to accuse you or bring me shame. My beloved bride, you consist of both male and female. You are called a virgin. For you have come out of the man-made doctrines and fled the churches of Babylon. My bride, you are not afraid to expose evil, even when it is the churches and expose the compromising pastors of the churches. And those who call themselves rabbis who are compromising too, this is evil in my sight. My bride will not remain silent and the more the heathen and Pharisees as well as the lukewarm Christians And the six churches mentioned in Revelation try to muzzle you, the louder you yell. My beloved bride, you who praise, worship, love, and adore, desire above all else to put a smile on Abba Yahweh's face. Pleasing him as well as your Messiah and soon coming groom. My bride, you know obedience to Yahweh and Yahushua is love, and you prove your love and loyalty by obeying Yah's commands. What is the price of your soul? There are 
false teachers in this world that tell you it is impossible to obey the Ten Laws. And I tell you that these false teachers are sent from Satan to lead you astray right into hell. Why do you call me master and not obey me? Is it not written, be ye holy as I am holy? Did I not set the example for you? It is the anointing that breaks all yokes and bondages. And I sent the comforter named Ruach HaKodesh, also called the Holy Spirit, to lead you into all truth and to teach you as well as convict you when you're in error. It is the Ruach HaKodesh that will keep you from sinning against me. The Bride of Yahushua does not struggle to keep the Ten Commandments. Instead, you guard them and defend them, knowing Yahweh wrote these Ten Laws. on a tablet of stone with his own finger, and he has not changed the laws nor discarded any of them. Man changes the laws, not Abba Yahweh, who is the creator of the laws given to Moses at Mount Sinai. Yahweh is the creator of the Sabbath and commanded all creation to honor it when he rested on the seventh day. After creating all of creation, the Sabbath is perpetual, never ending, and even will be honored in the reign of the millennium. Verily I say unto you, the true bride of Yahushua, you know all of this, and your sole desire is to obey Yahweh's every word. And I am that word that was made flesh. I am the living Torah. Verily I say unto you that you the bride of Yahushua seek to obey and go the extra mile, whatever it takes to obey Abba Yahweh. To do what others deem foolish, such as observing the holy feast days and keeping the true Sabbath. And flee man-made religions that change the Sabbath to Sunday. My bride, you know anything that is corrupt or perverted is not holy and is an abomination unto Yahweh, such as an abortion, homosexuality, and same-sex marriages. My, tr my bride, you do not remain silent, but loudly protest these things and condemn anyone who does not do so, calling them a coward and a hypocrite. Is it any wonder the Jews and Israelites will not listen to the Christians? For they know, for they know no son of Yahweh who says he is king of the Jews and Messiah would discard the Sabbath and teach any day will do when it was the seventh day Yahweh and I rested after making creation. Why do you who call yourselves Christians dishonor me by breaking the Torah laws? given to Moses, and not honor the, the holy days decreed by Yahweh to be holy unto him. Did I not say that I did not come to cancel the laws of the prophets of old, but to fulfill them? Verily I say unto those of you who call yourself Christians, you are harming I, Yahushua, more than helping me when you behave in such a manner what will be your excuse when you stand before me? A mistranslated and misunderstood scripture, the true bride of Yahushua will not compromise what she knows to be true. She is faithful to the Yah she serves. Verily I say unto you, my bride must be spiritually mature. Old enough to marry, I am not speaking of your biological age, but spiritual age. Depending on your spiritual growth, and this isn't counting the days since you accepted me as Messiah. 
where children grow and mature at different rates. Some are spiritually mature in a short time, others take many years to mature. Even pastors and still others never do mature. They are just satisfied with the milk of the word, never learning anything new. Maturity for you, my bride, depends on how quickly you realize you crave more than just spiritual milk of my word. But need spiritual meat to eat. You feel the hunger pains of starvation if you don't get it regularly. You who are the bride of Yahushua have spiritual teeth of a lion and quickly devour anointed spiritual meat. such as this prophetic word you now recognize as my voice and are never satisfied with mere earthly knowledge. But seek and ask for more heavenly knowledge to know Abba Yahweh the way Abraham did. My bride, you seek to know the secrets of Yahweh that are reserved for those that he and I can trust. My bride, you are scattered all over the world right now. My bride, you consist of the first fruits as mentioned in Revelation 14. You are the best fruit I will redeem from the earth before the great tribulation. My bride, you only boast in who you serve and you remain humble, never fully understanding why I, Yahushua, would choose you, but feel honored you have been chosen, and yet do not take it for granted. And still pray you're counted worthy to be called my bride. My bride understands the importance of observing the holy days her Jewish Messiah groom kept. My bride, you have laid everything down on the altar of sacrifice, holding nothing back, and will follow your Messiah and obey all I say. Your cry on your lips is holy. My bride, you not only love Abba Yahweh and Yahushua, but you but are passionately in love with Abba Yahweh and I Yahushua, just as the songs of Solomon. My bride, you put both the Creator and the Messiah equally first in your lives in love. All others, be they spouse, children, family, friends, business, or pleasure, come second in your love and life. My bride, you would be willing to lay down your life if need be, if this was Yah's will. My bride, you forsook all your earthly comforts when I said to you, come and follow me. My bride, you will not only have my name inscribed on your forehead, foreheads, but the name of Abba Yahweh, so all will see what Revelation 14 plainly states. My bride, you have a burden to speak forth the truth when only a remnant really desires to hear, hear and obey. My beloved bride, you would rather have the name of your beloved Abba Yahweh and I, Yahushua, on your lips speaking of us in love and meditating on who we are and how to please us and, and study on heavenly things and prophetic things to come. And you do not despise the gift of prophecy nor mock the gifts of the Ruach HaKodesh. You know all the gifts of the Ruach HaKodesh are of value and desire them all. You, you learn all you can about your Heavenly Father and hide the Holy Scriptures in your heart. My bride, you know this earth is not your home. You are merely passing through until the job I sent you to do is done. My bride, you long to hear that shofar horn, knowing Messiah Groom was, will appear immediately after the blast of the shofar. To personally carry you to your heavenly home, a mansion I have built for you, awaits. 
along with your rewards that are being stored up in your storehouses. My bride, you long for me the way I have longed to physically be with you, and it is not afar off now. Take comfort, my beloved, and on this next Rosh Hashanah 2004, speak to me in a way that you would speak to a loving spouse. when you want him to return back to you because he has gone away on a long trip. Weep for my return out of love and longing, not out of fear. I long to hear your words of passion and love for me, and so does our Abba Yahweh. I have left you my words of love in the Songs of Solomon. This is not about a sexual love. What I love that few can understand, except my bride does. Read them with spiritual discernment and ask me, and I shall explain the parable sonnets. For it is more than just Solomon's love that is described. My bride is hidden in these verses. Can you find it? I share another secret with the bride of Yahushua. My ring maiden Elizabeth also wears a spiritual wedding ring. She will know who I have given these rings to. Each of my bride will wear a unique wedding ring, with, which is a reflection of the price they pay to become my bride. No two rings will be alike. Beloved, when the bride and the guest are all arrive, then shall the married supper of the Lamb commence. I, Yahushua, will not only dance and rejoice with my beloved bride, but also with my beloved honored guest. Blessed are all who are invited to the married supper of the Lamb, as it is written in Revelations 19.9. The invitations were sent out to everyone in this world, and yet, how few know what an honor it is to be called my bride or receive the invitation as an honored guest. Few understand the price I paid to invite you. Some invitations are lost, some discarded and labeled trash. Some invitations are gathering dust. Some invitations are counterfeited and some guests don't understand. This is an RSVP invitation only. Only those who respond and accept Ah Yahushua as your Messiah will attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. And only those whose names are found written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of this world. Woe be unto the enemies who seek to mock, discredit, harm, slander, or kill this ring maiden, bride of mine, or destroy this ministry. Why do you gnash your teeth in rage, you with a spirit like unto a Pharisee, you who are Judases in disguise? Do you not know that the letter killeth, and my Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, giveth life to my words? Why do all these mentioned above care, for none of you are either my bride or my guest? And where you are destined, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. You who have a form of godliness and no godliness within, and have no holiness within, have chosen long ago damnation instead of salvation. None but the true bride of Yahushua will know the day, the year, the day, or hour I, Yahushua, will come to catch my bride away. To those who mock this message, it wasn't for your ears, it wasn't for your eyes to see or ears to hear. Only the bride of Yahushua and only those destined to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb will recognize this is the voice 
of the only Messiah and soon coming heavenly bridegroom. They will know all others will remain blind and deaf. Just as a loving husband cares, protects, and cherishes his bride, how could I do any less but only more for my bride? I, Yahushua, in coming, make yourself ready. It is not enough to just be washed in my blood shed for you at Calvary. For the guests are washed in the, the atoning blood of, at Calvary, but my bride is spotless. Without spot or wrinkle on her robe, sparkling white, not bringing me any shame. Arise, my bride, listen for the shofar horn. Let your light shine before all. Your bridegroom doeth come quickly. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, Yahushua HaMashiach, come. Let anyone that hears say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty come, and let anyone that wishes take the water of life free of charge. And the one who testified to these things say, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Sila. End of prophecy. Given to this ring maiden, please don't stone this messenger, but if you do, it will be for the glory of Yahweh and Yahushua.